you all can hear me okay? Give me a thumb, great. Feel our hands resting somewhere on our body or on another surface. There may be other sensations like vibration, energy, numbness. There may even be an absence of sensation and just knowing that numbness also is a sensation that we can bring our awareness to. Meeting and greeting all of these sensations as much as possible with our presence and a kind, compassionate awareness. We may also want to tune into the breath as a way into the body, if that feels available. Noticing the sensations and movement of the breath. We may notice how deep or shallow the breath is, how long or short our breath is not bringing any attitude of making it different, just noticing this is how it is right now. And just noticing what sensations there are to notice in the breath. It could be the coolness of the inhale, the air coming into our body. It could be the movement rise and fall of the belly or the chest. We may notice subtler sensations, maybe even we might notice our ribs moving subtly outward as we inhale. We may notice sensations in our nostrils or ways that the body might have more tension or ease with each inhale or exhale. Just inviting ourselves again to meet our experience in this moment with as much presence as possible. Could we give ourselves and our experience in this moment our complete attention? The way that we would offer our at attention perhaps to a dear friend who is sharing with us. Is it possible to give ourselves that kind of caring Caring, fully present attention. We continue to turn our attention towards ourselves, our body, our sensations. I invite just to put a hand on the chest or belly or both. We can maybe just try this on and see how it feels. See if it feels supportive to the sense of offering ourselves our caring attention and tuning in to this feeling of contact we may notice the warmth, the warmth of a hand on our body. We feel the, the actual temperature. There may also be some energy there. 
we may feel between the hand and our body. And just to try on, notice, see if there's a way you can notice the experience of the hand in this moment, offering a caring touch or even just the intention to, to meet ourselves with care through this hand, just bringing our awareness into the hand feeling, if it's available, a sense of bringing warmth, bringing care. And this may not be available at all. It may just be a concept, but just bringing curiosity, bringing curiosity to the hand. Might I find some warmth, care, attention in this touch? And then bringing our curious attention to the part of our body that's being touched. Maybe it's the area right over our heart or over our belly button or some other part of the body. Just tuning into that part of the body and being curious, is there a sense of receiving? Might I find a sense of receiving care or receiving touch in this contact when I'm tuning into the part of my body that is receiving this, this touch? And just allowing our awareness to be to stay with this contact more generally. And I'm going to add in some phrases and just receiving also the sound of my voice, these phrases, you may wish to offer them to yourself or just allow them to be sound in the background. May I be safe and protected. May I be held with kindness and compassion. May I receive the care that I need. May I find ease, well being, and comfort. May I find freedom and liberation. May I be safe and protected from all harm. May I be held in kindness and compassion. May I receive the care that I need. May I find ease well-being and comfort. May I find freedom and liberation. May I be safe and protected from all harm. May I be held in kindness and compassion.
may I receive the care that I need. May I find ease, well-being, and comfort. May I find freedom and liberation. Continuing in this practice of offering ourselves our good wishes. Maybe there's one particular phrase that has resonated or landed in the body that you'd like to continue. Continuing, continue to offer yourself that phrase or continue to just be with the felt sense of these good wishes. We'll continue to practice in silence for some minutes. Just continuing any part of this practice that has resonated. We may think of it as blowing on the embers of our loving kindness or good wishes for ourselves.
we continue practice. There may be in our awareness some, some element of discomfort or suffering. Maybe there is sadness, frustration. Just noticing if there is even frustration that arises with the practice is that it's not as we wish it to be, or just feeling the sadness and loss that is so pervasive in our world right now. Just allowing whatever discomfort, difficult feelings are present, allowing them to be present, allowing them also our attention, our awareness, and offering our compassion. We will offer some phrases of compassion and these can also just be a background if your own practice is strong, stay with your practice or if the loving kindness is still, still blazing, stay with that, but just offering these phrases as one more possible thread of practice. I care about my suffering. I am here for my suffering. May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I be held in kindness and compassion. May my pain and sorrow be eased. I care about my suffering. I'm here for my suffering. May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I be held in compassion. May my pain and sorrow be eased. I care about my suffering. I am here for my suffering. May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I be held in kindness and compassion. May my pain and sorrow be eased. care about my suffering. I 
I am here for my suffering. May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I be held in kindness and compassion. May my pain and sorrow be eased. Continuing, if there's been any phrase that resonated with you, you may continue to offer it to yourself or continue to practice in silence. Continuing to offer ourselves our kind attention, our full presence. And we'll continue for a few more minutes in silence. As we come towards the end of this practice period, I invite you to just check in and see if there's any appreciation or gratitude present for towards yourself, for offering yourself the nourishment and support of practice. For just showing up here tonight, for taking this time to give yourself your full undivided attention. Just as we might thank a dear friend for having tea with us and listening, listening to what's going on in our life. Can we just offer ourselves that thanks for taking this time to offer ourselves 
our undivided attention. And also checking in to see if there is appreciation and gratitude that arises towards this community of practice, the Sangha, feeling the support of others practicing alongside us. Maybe offering some gratitude towards the other, other beings who have shown up on the Zoom tonight. and offering our gratitude and appreciation to anyone else who's supporting us to be able to practice. And offering appreciation and gratitude also to the earth for all of the support and nourishment we receive in every moment from this earth, our home. Thank you all for your practice. So good to practice with you. Um, and, you know, take care of yourself. If you need, need more tea, need to go to the bathroom, just take care of your whatever you need. Um, I'm going to continue on without a break, but I um, just want to encourage you all to take care of yourselves. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to share a little bit about my own compassion practice and a few other thoughts about practicing um, compassion, particularly as queer, trans, genderqueer, non-binary, et cetera, folks. Um, and um, some of the challenges and, and maybe um, special special elements there are there um yeah so first of all i just wanted to like frame what is compassion <laughs> and how does it fit into our practice um buddhist practice so just um to ground ground ourselves um the compassion is one of the heart practices sometimes called the divine abodes or brahma viharas the um we have this set of four, four qualities or practices um, of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity that were um, that are part of the Buddhist teachings. And um, I've heard them explained as with the metaphor of a boat. Uh, that's been very helpful to me is um, if we think of we're moving, you know, just moving through the world in the rowboat, the, um, the, the prow of the boat or the front of the boat is loving kindness that we're cultivating, um, cultivating friendliness as much as is possible as we move through our lives. And then, um, you know, as we meet suffering, whether our own suffering or the suffering of others, when we're coming, um, coming with that attitude of friendliness, then compassion naturally arises. Or, you know, this is, it's a metaphor. Maybe it doesn't naturally arise, <laughs> but, um, but that's kind of what we're cultivating is to meet, you know, meet suffering with compassion. And sometimes it's just called like the quivering of the heart. Um, this uh, feeling of care that arises um, when we meet suffering. And then when we meet joy in the world, 
or in ourselves, we meet that with sympathetic joy, which is the joy that we experience at the joy of others. Um, and that that naturally arises as we are meeting the world with friendliness and we encounter, encounter joy. And then the equity, so these are like the two oars of the boat, compassion and sympathetic joy. And then the rudder of the boat is equanimity. So I think of it as like we build equanimity over time by cultivating these other um, qualities and practices of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy over time. It's like, um, I think another word that I think of around equanimity is like resilience. We're building our capacity, building our resilience to hold it all, to hold the 10,000 joys and the 10,000 sorrows. And that that equanimity just um, is, an, is a byproduct of these heart practices. It's just increasing our capacity. Um, another way that compassion comes up is this idea of it being sort of the two wings of the one wing of our practice being um, wisdom and the other one compassion and that we can't with that neither can, um, you know, we can't go forward in our path or practice without both. One or the other by itself is, um, will kind of lead us off in the wrong direction. Um, yeah, and I think another thing I think of particularly um, as a queer and trans person is the bodhisattva of compassion called Avalokiteshvara or Kuan Yin, or ha this bodhisattva has many other names in other cultures. Um, but one of the things that is said about Avalokiteshvara, so it, the, the name means um, one who hears the cries of the world. And um, one of the things that's said about Avalokiteshvara is that they appear in whatever gender is needed for as they go to meet the suffering in the world. And, um, and they also manifest in different lineages and cultures as sometimes male, sometimes female, and sometimes um, like androgynous or now we would use the word non-binary, but that would be ahistorical to apply to Avalokiteshvara. But um, it, often in, in different lineages, Avalokiteshvara is, is depicted with kind of the qualities of both genders. And, um, and so like in particularly within China, Avalokiteshvara came to China as a male bodhisattva and then evolved into a female bodhisattva, Kuan Yin. Um, and along the way, there was a lot of kind of gender fluidity of this particular figure. So it's just interesting that compassion is historically, um, the bodhisattva of compassion is very fluid in their gender. Um, so that's, um, I was actually gonna share a couple of images. I'm not sure, let me see if this, oh, it's like I don't have the screen sharing um, ability, but um, I do have a few images that are, it's, it's like something that, um, oh, let me try again. Yeah, these are a couple of images of Avalokiteshvara. And um, there's just, um, both are from China. And, um, uh, and so it's just interesting to see like some of the dress and posture has male qualities, but they're also, you know, the form is sort of has um, feminine or rounded appearance. It's just, a, it's interesting to see some of these images and, the, um, and thinking of this being as one who would appear in, in um, taking on whatever gender was most, um, most needed in that moment. So, um, 
there is a statue of Evlo Kateshvar at, at Spirit Rock Meditation Center that's right at the entrance to the community meditation hall. And it was beautiful when we were doing trans day longs there to have that figure welcoming us into the space. Um, yeah, so compassion, um, I have to say it's one of the, of the heart practices, it's the one that I've struggled with the most. And um, one of the things that's made it very challenging is, um, you know, I think I, when I first encountered the practice of compassion, it just didn't resonate for me. I was just like, I would do the phrases, they didn't really land, they felt very dry. I often just wouldn't be able to remember them. Um, I really was struggling with it. You know, this is maybe um, now like 10 years ago or something like that. And I can remember it was a time when um, I, when I was working, I was working as an executive director. And I remember one day someone, like one of my staff, like using the word compassionate as, as, some, as a way to describe me. And I was like surprised. I was like, oh, what is... Um, I feel like I struggle so much with this, with this quality. And um, what do you even, so I was like, I wanted to inter interrogate this. What do you mean when you say that I'm compassionate? And, and what I understood was, oh, it just, they're really referring to a quality of presence of like, you know, that I am there giving my full attention, you know, and I had very much of a practice at that time in that role of making sure I gave everyone my full attention. Um, particularly coming from experience of having so many bosses who didn't give me their attention at all and how painful that was. Um, so it was like anyone who came in, volunteer, staff member, board member, whatever, you know, I would give that person my full attention. Um, you know, really feeling like in my role as a leader, no one was ever interrupting me, you know, it was my role to be there, be there for people. Um, so anyway, just I realized, oh, that process, that quality of presence, of that full attention, is in itself uh, a way that compassion can show up, and it really resonated. Like once I had that realization, I was like, oh, like this is my compassion practice is you know to offer others my full attention, but also to offer myself my full attention, which is quite challenging sometimes. And I think for me in particular, it's been challenging as someone who like grew up in a family with a lot of neglect. And I think, you know, one piece was like just the neglect of being a child of the seventies um, and terrible parenting. Um, but some of it was also around my identities and that there were some very specific ways that I was, um, you know, treated with less care and less attention and in some times deliberate rejection by my parents because of um, actually my gender identity, because I was, you know, at a very young age, really um, like clear that my gender was masculine and that was something like that my parents were very worried about and, and and had weird ideas about and that caused me to actually get have some pretty deliberate rejection on the part of my parents um and also uh, came up around race and um you know my father who was a an activist um and mostly in communities of color actually had a hard time with the fact that i looked so white and, um, and had blue eyes. And that was like a, 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 a real element in him, him not being in my life was actually just my appearance. And those things were clear to me as a kid. And, um, and so having been treated with so little care and compassion in some ways in my family, it was so hard to feel like, well, I don't, how do I know how to do something that has never, has not been offered to me? That I have not seen modeled to me. So it was really helpful for me to 
get this like, oh, it's not a thing I have to produce. I don't have to produce compassion. Um, I just, the pra my practice is just of showing up, just of being present to myself, including my moments of suffering. So at that time, my main compassion phrase was just, I'm not going anywhere. You know, and I would just repeat that to myself over and over and over again, because of course, having grown up in a very like neglectful, rejecting, abandoning situation, I would do those same things to myself. And so just this piece of, I'm gonna show up for myself, um, I'm not going anywhere. That was, that was my compassion practice for, for quite a while. And it's interesting because the, the more traditional compassion phrases of, um, you know, I care about your suffering, um, may you, you know, may your pain and sorrow be eased, those land with me much more now. So it's interesting to just see, to feel that, oh, I'm in a different place now than when I first started practicing with this. Um, but that, that, um, that practice of I'm not going anywhere is still a very important part of my practice. This, just this piece of really showing up for my own experience. Um, yeah, and anyone, it is eight o'clock. If anyone has to go, no worries. Um, and it's been great to be here with you all. So um, wishing, wishing well to anyone who has to leave at eight. Um, and let me just check my notes here. I'll just take a moment for those of you who are leaving, just the Donna is in the chat for Renee, uh, just PayPal, because uh, there's no e-transfer things in the United States. Yeah, I think the other thing I would say, yeah, and thank you. Thanks, folks who are leaving. Um, around just my own practice of compassion is, you know, this practice of really showing up for myself, being present, giving myself my full attention, um, you know, taking retreat. Sometimes when I would do like a week long retreat, that would be my intention. My intention would be just, I am going to be here for myself for this week. I'm going to give myself my full attention. And that was really healing. There was a piece of that at that time that was really about trust, building trust within myself, really building um, kind of resilience so that that, you know, that little kid who had been abandoned um, and neglected knew that, you know, adult me, adult Renee was really there for them and was not going to leave no matter how painful things got. And, um, and that's, you know, like, I still don't have a hundred percent track record on that. There are still times when I might, you know, be in a relationship that's really difficult and abandon myself in my attempt to make something work um, with someone else or something like that. Those things still happen, <laughs> absolutely. But it's um, that commitment, that commitment to come back to myself over and over again, no matter how hard it is, has like restored something within myself. And I really think of that as the fruits of my own compassion practice. Really being a companion to myself no matter how hard things get. And, um, and these are hard times. These are really hard times, um, even for those of us who are you know, introverts and happy staying in our houses all the time. Um, it's, still, it's still tough times and I don't know anyone who hasn't lost people. And we've all lost figures in this world who have been so important. You know, I know for me, you know, people like Bell Hooks and Stephen Sondheim and others who've been so influential in, in um, my own self-creation um, have been lost, you know, and, and then almost everyone I know has lost a family member or somebody close to them. 
And so that, you know, this, this practice of just companioning ourselves, just showing up for ourselves feels more critical than ever in these times. So I am curious as we, you know, in, um, with all of you, I would love to hear a little bit about like, how do you practice with compassion or self-compassion? Um, are there, are there practices that you have found um, that are really supportive to you? Or is there any place in your life right now that is really calling for compassion? Well, I'm gonna put these questions in the chat and then does anyone who feels like sharing, 